Okay. Um, another skills video. This time we're on graph transformations. Uh, some people find this less glamorous than others, but you know I think it's pretty cool. Um, how you can slide the graphs around and stuff, and just think about what they represent. You know, you start off with some relationship, uh, which can be represented by a graph, and then you know you find that your constraints have changed, and actually you've uh, you found I don't know a particle that moves twice as fast, so therefore its gradient has doubled, and therefore that that's going to create changes or uh, you find something that has shrunk by a certain amount, or you could uh, map another graph onto another if you did a certain process to it. Therefore, you'd know, you know, kind of how to move between one function and another. So first off, we need to establish some standard rules and standard graphs. So the standard graphs that you must know are the quadratic obviously, which we know is the u-shape, y equals x squared, our cubic, which looks like that, y equals x cubed, or, you know, a cubic can look like this, let's say, so it can have two turning points, and what's called an inflection point, or it can just have one inflection point, or it can have one turning point, yeah, no, actually that's it. Two two turning points and one reflection point, uh, or a choice to cross between them. You've also got <coughs> uh, obviously your straight line. Uh, we know that one. We've also got this y equals one over x graph, which is called the reciprocal graph. I remember reciprocal means one over. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. You may have seen it before. But why does it look like that? What are these red things I'm drawing on here? Well, these are called, so we should use dotted lines. So let's dot those. So this is x equals 0. These are called asymptotes. Now in class we'll probably talk about, well, why does the graph look like that? An asymptote, though, just for sake of definition, means uh, a line that the graph will never cross or never touch. So this, this stretch of blue here will go on forever and get infinitesimally small, infinitesimally close to the asymptote, but it will never hit it. And let's think about that. Think about if x was uh, a million or a million million. One over a really massive number. Think about what that is. Okay? So... These are your standard shapes, your standard graphs. So you're going to learn another one later, but for now, this is fine. We also need our standard rules. Okay, so if y equals f of x, right? So f of x is just another way of describing y. So f is a function of x. So in other words, you might know a bit about functions. Um, a function takes... A value and say multiplies and adds to it or squares it or square roots it or something like that so f is that function okay then there are certain rules that we should know from GCSE so f of x plus a for instance uh, this will translate the graph so this will move the graph left or right so left or right so by a vector okay so it will translate the graph by minus a naught if a is positive. In other words, it will react in the opposite way to what you think it would. Let's kind of see why that is. Well, if you have, for example, let's start with a function x squared. So y is x squared. And remember, f of x is another way of describing y. So, f of x equals x squared. If I had f of whatever goes in that bracket, now this function's been defined, 
will replace that x value there. So if I have f of x equals x squared and I replace that with f of uh, bananas, then that will give me bananas, because remember it replaces whatever the x is, squared looks a bit more like a chili actually. Or if I have f of 2x plus 1,000, then this will be wherever x is, 2x plus 1,000, all squared. Okay, so you get the picture. f of elephants equals elephant squared. Okay, whatever's in that bracket replaces the x value. So let's think about it. If we have f of x equals x squared, and I want to look at, I don't know, f of x plus 2, which is, that replaces the x, x plus 2 squared. Well, what does that look like? Let's look at y equals x plus 2 squared. Well, we know that y equals x squared looks like this and touches 0, 0. So that's y equals x squared. But when does this thing touch 0? Well, let's think about it. When is y 0? Well, y is 0 when x is minus 2. So minus 2. So everything has been shifted to the left by 2. You see? And that's what this translation vector means. So the top bit means moving in the x direction, and the bottom bit means moving in the y direction. Okay? So there's your first rule. So remember, like often, uh, translations or transformations which happen inside the F bracket. So inside here will correspond to X transformations. So, and they will often uh, do the opposite of what you think they will. So for example, F of 2X, remember, that's the same as then if, if F of X equals X squared, F of 2X will be 2X all squared, which is 4x squared. Let's think about that. What's going to happen there? Well, there's our original. Not, not. And remember, at x equals 1. 1 squared is 1, isn't it? So that would give you a corresponding y value of 1. Whereas, if we've got f of 2x, which would give us 4x squared, well, it's 0 squared is still 0, so that's still a y value of 0. If x is 1, though, 1 squared is 1, all times by 4, x is 1. So now we've got a y value of 4, which is here. So look, much steeper. The graph has closed in on itself. It's become narrower. Or in other words, if you think about it here, at what point does the graph give a y value of, t of uh, 4? It gives it at x equals 2. So can you see that if you have f of ax, then this will stretch all x values by scale factor a half because 1 is obviously half of 2. Every, well, the graph has been squished inwards, okay? And you have to use that language and that notation stretched by a scale factor half, okay? So, <clears throat> let's see what we've got so far. So we've got f of x plus a means translation minus a zero if a is positive. So it means move it to the left. F of AX, we're saying stretch by scale factor 1 over A, remember? 1 over A uh, in X direction. We've also got our outside transformation. So what happens if we have AF of X? Well, a f of x, that's just if we started off with y equals x squared, so f of x equals x squared, and then we times it all by 3 on the left-hand side, then we would have to times everything on the right by, uh, by 3 as well. And what that does is then it stretches all of your y 
notice all the y things have been times by 3, hasn't it? The y itself has been times by 3. So therefore, you have a stretch by scale factor A in y direction. Because all the y values have been times by A. Okay, remember, it's the opposite kind of as f of ax, where all your x values have been stretched by 1 over A i.e. they get to the y value quicker, um, your, like your x values give you the corresponding y value quicker as they get nearer to the origin. <coughs> uh, we've also got our f of x plus a. So remember so far these are the x transformations and now we're dealing with the y transformations because they're external to the f of x. So f of x plus a Let's think about it. If we've got y equals x squared, so f of x equals x squared. If we add 4 to everything, if I add 4 to the left, I have to add it to the right. So our original, which is at 0, 0, y equals x squared, we have now added 4 to every single y value. So that minimum has moved up by 4, 0 plus 4 is 4, and therefore that corresponding value of 1, which gave also 1, has been moved up by 4, so now 1 gives a y value of 5, etc. You see, everything moves up, so it's translated by A, but in the y direction this time. So, translation 0 A, if A is positive, right? So, everything moves up. You also have minus f of x, which is, well, let's think about it. Here's y equals x squared, so f of x equals x squared. So if I times everything by minus 1, then every single y value has been times by minus 1. Here's the original, naught, naught. Remember, 1 gave a corresponding y value of 1. If I times everything by minus 1, all the y values by minus 1, then everything's going to flip over, isn't it? It's going to flip over. One's going to now give a y value of minus one, right? So what we have is we now have that all y values, so we've got a reflection in the x axis because everything below, above that x axis flipped over, didn't it? Okay. Likewise, so remember this is a y transformation. We could have the same thing for our x transformation, so I'll put it up here. F of minus x. What happens with f of minus x? Let's think about it again. So if f of x equals x squared, remember whatever is in here replaces the x. So f of minus x is minus x all squared, which is x squared. Now, it doesn't seem very obvious but in this example, but what's actually happened is the graph has flipped over. It's reflected about the y-axis this time because basically all x values have been times by minus 1. So they've been stretched by a scale factor of 1 over minus 1. Okay? So everything has flipped around. It'll be more obvious uh, in the next video. But... This then, for that y equals minus x, sorry, f of minus x. This then is a reflection in the y axis, and you must use this language to describe these graphs, okay? In the next video, we're going to see how we actually apply this stuff.